IIST reporting services in Bonn for the first UN climate change talks after the conclusion of the Paris Agreement. Today, the 17th of May, we covered a side event that focused on adaptation to climate change in the agriculture sector. So far, a topic considered by some neglected under the UNFCCC negotiations. Agriculture is the sector which is the most affected by climate change already now and will be even more in the future. But this is also a significant emitter. The new thing we've seen in recent years is after years and years of inaction on agriculture and in climate change, we're seeing a huge commitment. So, for example, out of all the countries that put adaptation into their INDCs, 90% of them prioritised agriculture. The thing is, how do we actually make it happen? For the first time this year, there is going to be here in Bonn two in-session workshops of SAPSTA on agriculture, one on adaptation in agriculture and one on making productivity of agriculture more resilient. This event was set here to mobilize uh, key negotiators, people who have s make, made submissions on behalf of the country or sometimes on behalf of regions of the world to SAPSTA on what they were foreseeing as key questions for a future work program on agriculture under SAPSTA that could be decided uh, during COP22 in Morocco. During discussions, three regions shared their experiences on adaptation measures, including policies, practices, technologies that could both address sustainability and farmers' concerns. This event was very useful for us as an African group because it brought us together and also to at least have a face-to-face -face interaction with practitioners, both at policy level, you know, at, uh, on, and the, some of the farmers who are around here, and also us who are the negotiators, because we need to link. We don't need to be talking to ourselves, because what is needed is action on the ground. How can a rural farmer get benefit of this process? So for us to bring a transformative change in the African region, particularly pertaining to agriculture, we need a proper institutional arrangement. These institutions, what I mean is uh, we have the Minister of Agriculture, which is at the hub of implementation of adaptation actions in agriculture. We have ministries of environment who are most of the times they are the focal point on climate change. So these institutions, they need to be talking to each other. In my talk earlier, there's been um, discussions on where some of the countries excel and some of the countries can benefit to learn from this excellence. For example, promotion of stress-tolerant rice varieties, promotion of stress-tolerant maize varieties for for food security. Laos, for example, learns from Thailand and how to do this. Um, Vietnam is very eager on learning about agriculture insurance, which the Philippines and Indonesia has been piloting. And so we provide the necessary exchange of knowledge and experience on, on this. There is a very important role from policies and from the government to provide an environment where information is available to support better decisions, to manage risks, climatic risk. So we have to improve our uh, weather forecast, our medium term, term forecast, and we are developing a new generation of insurances in order to, to transfer the risk of uh, extreme events from farms to uh, financial source outside. I think a strong message coming out from the group this evening was about the importance of integrated systemic approaches. So for example, in one community, you might want to see a mix of using solar power for local energy generation, better soil management to increase the fertility, very local level water management, uh, for example, a small scale irrigation scheme, and then combining that with support from the outside. So climate information services, seasonal weather forecasts, insurance products, these kinds of things, the kind of support that governments and private sector can both provide.